This is Extra Paycheck Podcast, episode number 29. You're listening to Extra Paycheck Podcast, where you will learn how to build and grow your own successful online business. Now, here's your host, Alex Soul. Welcome to yet another episode of Extra Paycheck Podcast. This is episode 29, and I'd like to start this episode by saying happy Thanksgiving to all the Canadian listeners since it's uh, Thanksgiving long weekend right now in Canada. All right, so let's move on. And today's special guest on Extra Paycheck Podcast is Stephanie Halligan. Stephanie is an entrepreneur, she's also a consultant in financial sphere, and she's got a really awesome website out herself, and we'll be talking about all of that and more in today's episode. So enjoy today's show. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the Extra Paycheck Podcast. Thanks for having me. Stephanie, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your business. What is that exactly that you do? So um, I like to tell people that I am a motivational cartoonist. Um, I have a website called arttoself.com where I send out a daily inspirational note and cartoon straight to your inbox. Um, So it's been a lot of fun introducing myself as a motivational cartoonist and just seeing people's reactions when I do that. That is a really great title. (laughs) And I'm sure you get a lot of like, what, what, wait, what, (laughs) what do you do? Right, exactly. So what do you do? (laughs) So um, I use cartoons to motivate and inspire people and talk about those kind of gnarly emotional topics out in the world. Um, Things about, you know, self-doubt as an entrepreneur or even personal finance, but really just using what I love to do, which is which is drawing comics and translating them um, into the spaces that I think need a little more lightness and um, some visual help too. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I love your story already from the very beginning because this is what I often recommend people and I advocate. I tell them, well, try to work with something that you love. Mm -hmm. Try to turn something that you like doing into a business because, uh, you know, sometimes it may seem like it would be impossible, but Look at your case. It's like, well, I like drawing comics and cartoons. How would you turn it into a business? See, but it is possible. And I'd like you to elaborate a little bit on that. How did you turn that into an actual business? Yeah. So I, you know, I joke that it took me about um, 25 years to get there just because when I was little, I grew up wanting to be a cartoonist more than anything, you know, watching Looney Tunes on the TV and like, you know, trying to draw Bugs Bunny while I was watching cartoons um, myself as a kid. And and so growing up, um, all through grade school, I really wanted to be an animator. I wanted to work for Disney, everything like that. Um, And then, you know, things started getting a little more practical. And come high school, I was applying for colleges. And I decided that it probably would be smarter to major in something that I could earn, you know, a salary and get a decent job from. Um, but, but after I graduated from college with a four year degree, I was in tons of debt and I was unemployed and it was a terrible time in the job market. Um, and I just really didn't know what to do. And so I actually got into the financial education space. I started teaching financial education classes, um, at a refugee center and I started diving into personal finance blogs to help me pay off my debt. And I started my own personal finance blog. So by the time I entered the workforce after college, I was working a full-time job at a nonprofit in financial education, you know, writing my personal finance blog and art was just not even in the picture anymore. I hardly, you know, had the passion or time to, um, doodle and draw here and there. So, uh, the art piece just kind of died away and I I focused on, on other things when I graduated from college. Um, but it wasn't until after a few years, again, working in the financial education space and running my own personal finance blog that I decided I had enough experience and, and unique experience to venture out on my own and do, freelance writing for personal finance websites and do consulting for financial literacy projects. Once I started doing that, and and I've done that for about two years now, I had all of this time freed up for me and I had a lot more creativity bubble to the surface. And I asked myself, okay, 
I kind of want to do cartoons again. Like this is coming back for me, the dream I had as a kid, where, where can I put this in my work? And so I started adding cartoons online to my personal finance website and immediately I got so much interest. Uh, people were sharing it like crazy. People were asking me to do custom cartoons for them for their own, um, money related projects. And I, I realized that I found something really, um, special and unique by combining this skill set I had that people were paying for this, this personal finance side of myself and this, this random love I had for cartoons and, and mashing them together in, into comics. So that's how I got started putting those out online. And from there, I, I took that to, a to my new site, art to self.com, which is a daily, um, inspirational cartoon. It has nothing to do with personal finance, but it was that trajectory of, um, trying the next thing and the next thing and putting my cartoons out in a different, you know, with a different side of myself that, that allowed me to s- discover that, yeah, people would, people are excited and interested in this, in this online cartoon space. And, and I've got something I can share with the world and even make money from. Mm-hmm. And I'm really curious, Stephanie, how do you monetize that website? So art to self is, um, this has been a, a game changer for me in terms of thinking differently, but about how I earn money from something I love so much. So I was looking at, um, websites like brain pickings, which is a, one of my favorite emails to open up. She does a great job mm. bringing together lots of interesting books that she's done lots of research on. Um, and the way that she's monetized her site, she's, she's been doing it for years, but she asks for donations. Um, she has some Amazon affiliate links and, um, I do as well in some of my emails when I reference a book that I've read, that's really inspiring. Um, or, or another, and something that's inspired me. Um, but, uh, I decided to, to model it after her, which was, you know what, I'm going to give, and give and give to my readers. And every day I'll put out a free cartoon with a note to start off your day on a, you know, in a positive way. Um, and anyone can subscribe and anyone can share these notes. Um, but if they resonate with you and if, you know, for example, today's cartoon really hit home for you. Um, what I ask is that my readers, you know, donate and, and help support the work that I do because I do it for free. And, and just putting up those donation buttons, I was just floored by the amount of people that donated so early when I started this site that continue to donate. I have monthly donations, so you can kind of do a subscription model and I have one-time donations and I get this wonderful mix of both, um, flowing in each month. And I just keep producing these daily cartoons. And, um, sure enough too, now that I've done it for, for enough time, I have, um, enough cartoons and notes that I can put together a book. So that's coming out really soon, uh, this year. And, um, uh, that will be another piece of the puzzle, but it's been really kind of natural, organic, really interesting way to earn money, um, almost by providing my art as a service and, and less as a, as a product. Um, and the response that people have had to that has really blown me away. That is really awesome. And I think, a lot of people appreciate the fact that your website is not like infected with ads <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> right? And you know, by by this, by that, by you know, it's it's um, in our time and age, I think it's pretty rare to have a website without ads or without many ads or affiliate links. So it's really really awesome, and I think a lot of people appreciate that fact as well. Um, of course, uh, you know, not that's not saying that. They don't love your art. They must love your art to give you money. It has to. Uh, th- there's no way around it, right? You don't give donations to a website because it doesn't have ads. You give it because you love the value that it provides, whatever it is, the content or the images or, you know, um, cartoons in your case, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Another thing you mentioned that I really liked, and this is something that is being mentioned a lot and has been for the past few years, I guess. Um, the Gary Vaynerchuk, I think, is really big on that model, the jab, 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 right hook, right? Right, yeah, <laughs> that, exactly. That goes, give, 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 and then act. Exactly. And, yeah, and that has really worked well because 
um, again, it's just, it, it is really clean and simple. There's no catches, which is you can sign up for these, these, uh, this newsletter I have, you can get it free for every day. You can get it free for your entire life. There's no obligation and there's, and I'm just going to keep giving. And, and if you feel so inclined to give back, um, then uh, by all means, I'd love a donation, but uh, that really clean model. And I think th- that people can sense that I am giving a lot and putting a lot of effort into this daily newsletter, uh, these daily cartoons, I-, I think it really comes across. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that model for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I've noticed I bought a few albums. Um, yes, there's still people that pay for music and don't just illegally <laughs> download it. And some of the bands that I really like, some of the artists, they tried the same model and it worked for them really well. They would put out uh, their album in MP3 format and you could download it completely free, the whole thing. And then you have a donation button and they're like, well, we know that some people might not like the music. Some people might not be able to afford every song on the album. So here's the album, download it, listen to it and give us whatever you think we deserve and whatever you could afford. Yeah, and I've seen I've um I read this wonderful book called The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer, who is also a musician and really used that um kind of open asking format to ask her fans to support her work. And she's done a lot of really other interesting things on Kickstarter and Patreon. I think she was the highest funded Kickstarter campaign as a musician um a, a few years ago. Um, and, and yeah, and I think that that direct outreach, you can you can really sense it as a fan or, a, you know, technically a customer that, um, you know, I've produced something that I really care about and put all my heart and soul into. And I really, you know, hope you value it, too. And I'm going to leave that open ended to you and not not force your hand to to paint something up front. Yeah, totally. And Stephanie, tell me, is art to self is your main business right now? So it's my main, you know, this is a really interesting question. I would say it's my main focus right now, but in terms of revenue, it's definitely not a complete money maker for me. Um, And I also am being really strategic with how I make my money and do my art and trying to actually keep them separate. I know there's a lot of, there's always a lot of talk in, in this space about, you know, monetizing your passion and doing what you love. But I actually, I do a lot of consulting work in the personal finance space and do financial literacy products projects so I can pay the bills so that I can think clearly and not put a lot of pressure on art to self and just let it grow organically. So it's making money and it's making me consistent money, but it's not at a point where it's replacing my income. And it's certainly not something that I want to put pressure on to monetize aggressively because as soon as I do that it loses the um it loses that that quality that we've been talking about of I'm asking my readers to support me so my goal with that is to grow my list because as that grows my monthly donations grow and it's a pretty linear relationship but in the meantime I'm definitely doing lots of other side projects to support myself while I I grow this art focused business Mm -hmm. And these other projects, let's say personal finance, uh, consulting and whatnot, do you do it like on your own or do you work for a company or something like that? Yeah. So most of my consulting projects, I'm hired by nonprofits or banks or startups or universities. And I'm an independent consultant and I come in and, and if they're trying to teach people how to manage their money better or educate customers. Um, you know, I come in and say, all right, how do we do this? So people don't fall asleep when they learn about budgeting or they're not completely scared when we start talking about investing. And I come in and do kind of creative curriculum development for, um, mostly like larger organizations or or companies out there that are trying to help people manage their money. Mm -hmm. All right. Got it. And another question then comes back to art to self. What if art to self organically grows uh, very big to the point that it will give you most of your income and a lot more than you earn doing any other side projects. Would you um, still kind of, as you mentioned, just let it grow naturally, keep growing? Or would you actually switch your focus only on that as your like full-time gig? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. And I, oh, I hope that the day comes when that would be a problem that I would have to think (laughs) about. Um, so, you know, as it grows, 
um, I, I would hope that one, I would, I love my consulting work. I think it uses a part of my brain that I really like to exercise and art has its own place and it uses a different part of my brain, but I really do. There's a part of me that loves that intellectual consulting type work. Um, and if art to self grew to something incredible where it could support me and make a lot of money and, and replace my income, um, I would hope that what it would do would allow me to be choosier about the kinds of projects I, I did or, or who I teamed up with or um, what companies I worked with. But I would imagine that at least where I am in my life, I really enjoy that kind of work too. So I'd still have some of that consulting work in my portfolio, even as art to self did its own thing. Mm-hmm. That's uh, yeah, a great answer. And I really do hope that you'll end up with that problem oh, at some thank point. You. Like art to self is way too big. What do I do well, now? That's right. <laughs> that, would be awesome. that would be great. And I'm sure that will happen. It will, it will take time, but it will happen. Thank you. <laughs> and Stephanie, I have a great question for you, which a lot of beginners especially ask. Um, they all get to that question eventually because we could listen to all these successful people and it's always the same, um, not the same story, but similar story, right? You start, um, you start, you find a good niche, you find a good demand, and then you start providing the solution for the problem. Let's say in your case, you're um, you're doing the motivational cartoons. It could be some software that you provide, and it's all great. But it always comes to the question uh, of getting traffic. How do you get exposure for your business or for your website most, mostly? Um, so yeah, how do you get traffic and how do you get people actually noticing your website and coming to it? Yeah. How did you do it with art to self With art to self this has been a really fascinating experiment because I'm a big believer that um, you know, different ways to market yours. It depends on what you're marketing because there are things that I've tried. I've read the, you know, how to increase your email subscriber list by, you know, a thousand people next week. I've read all those posts and, um, realized that just, you know, some of the tactics really don't apply to what I'm doing and I really have to focus in on what does. So for example, um, right now, Pinterest is not a big, <laughs> a big market vehicle for me, which is, to- which totally surprised me. But I kind of had to test that out and figure out that, all right, even though it's technically images and cartoons, it's not driving traffic and subscribers. Um, For me, what drives people most to this website, you know, art to self, it's cartoons, you know, that I need that are for myself that are out there expressing my thoughts and ideas. I need people to really know me and understand me well. So the two biggest things that have helped me marketing wise, one is going on podcast interviews where I can share my story and people can hear my voice and connect with me personally and then subscribe to art to self. And the second is creating, um, uh, blog posts and guest cartoons. So not just guest posting, but guest cartooning on sites where there are similar readers. So either readers who like daily inspirational messages, um, you know, folks in the in the yoga community or even the more spiritual community, and a lot of um, actually entrepreneurs who have all those kind of internal dialogues about self doubt and um, should I keep going and and need that motivation every day have they've also resonated with art to self. So um, drawing cartoons and writing posts for other people's websites who are really um, you know, their, their readers really align with my readers has been really successful for me and, and everything else, um, has worked a little bit, but not too much. So I've really decided to focus on the two kind of the, the, the two marketing pushes that give me the best bang for my buck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is really awesome. And I do believe it, this is ironic because I don't really do guest posts, Mm -hmm. But I do believe that this is one of the best things you could do um, for your business still. Because last year we had a lot of um, talk about there's like this this huge, um, how should I put it? It wasn't a scandal, but it was like this panic in the SEO world with uh, Google apparently not liking guest posting um, on blogs and stuff. And what people didn't realize that I've always said it, I'm like, Yes, Google does love guest posts as long as they're natural and as long as they're real. You can't just write a really bad quality 300-word article about, um, let's say, uh, finances, personal finances, and post it on a weight loss blog. You know, it doesn't make sense. Of course, Google's not going to like it. Right, exactly. And and for me, 
I'm, you know, I'm targeting really human subscribers who really need to love and enjoy getting a daily cartoon from me. I mean, that's a really specific person and they better really know and understand um, what they're getting into and really like my story. So I'm going to be putting a lot of time and effort into whatever guest post I put out there that is a cartoon that describes who I am, that describes my journey. And then at the end, the call to action being really specific to say, if you want daily motivational cartoons like this, you know, come over to my website. So yeah, I totally agree. And the more personal and intentional and creative I can be when I, when I do post on other people's websites, the, the, it's benefited me so immensely. I even had one of my guest posts go viral on one site and I got 600 subscribers in like 24 hours. And that, that was incredible. But if I hadn't put the effort in up front to make a really, um, you know, write a really meaningful, soulful post and draw a cartoon with it, it, you know, it didn't matter how, how, far it reached it had to be really quality content so you just you never know where it will go so you should absolutely put the effort into it in the first place Mm -hmm. that that is really awesome and i love your answer because i find that not many people do that and not many people pay that much attention to where they're posting and what they're posting Mm -hmm. and you know it creates all kinds of misunderstandings and um i guess people not 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 believing and quitting uh, these strategies when they should not be quitting them, but rather thinking twice or three times, four times, mm-hmm. thinking who are you writing for and what exactly are you writing? Because, you know, if you post a content that you yourself don't like, and exactly. actually don't love, <laughs> what's the point? Don't put it out there. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I'm a huge believer in that. And that's, you know, art to self is based off that principle, which is I draw a cartoon that I need to hear and I write a note that I need to hear. So my guest posting strategy is going to be the, the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it happens to me sometimes that, well, I pretty much love all the um, interviews that I do with my guests for the podcast. But from time to time, I do an episode uh, without a guest. I do it myself and I pick a subject or most of the time it's questions because I get the same questions over and over and over again um, about either marketing or podcasting or anything related to online business, right? So it's often the same questions. And sometimes I just pick an episode and I answer these questions or that one specific question could take half an hour of answering. And it's happened to me that I had to re-record the same episode like five times mm-hmm. because I would be like, okay, that's that's good. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with, with it. And then I'll be like, oh, my God, I forgot to mention this one thing that's like super important. And the way that I had to put it in the episode, I can just edit it out and just add it. So I'm like, OK, let's go again, <laughs> starting from the very beginning. And I do it until I'm like, OK, I love that answer. If I had this question and somebody gave me that answer, I would totally love it. This is when I stop recording because I'm like, that's, you know, that that's worth putting out. there. Right. Absolutely. And I and I think the. The difference between that and perfectionism, because that is intention and, and quality, um, but where perfectionism comes in is if you, you know, if you worked on that episode forever and ever and you didn't put it out or you put it off for, you know, months and months. But what's nice is I think what both of us have done, you have a podcast where people expect episodes. So you can work on an episode as much as you want, but it has to get out eventually. And I, and I have the same um, kind of motivation with art to self, which is I'm going to put time and care into each cartoon and each post that I write. But at the end of the day, it has to come out because it's a daily cartoon. So, um, I don't have to, you know, I've put this system and this business model in place where I'm forced to bump up against my perfectionism all the time and say, you know what, it's, it's better, better done than perfect. Yeah, that is, that is totally true. And, uh, yeah, the quality is what matters a lot. And I've actually abandoned some of my websites that, um, site projects that I wanted to monetize eventually. And I abandoned them simply for that reason, because I couldn't come up with uh, quality content. It would take too much time to create quality content. And once again, I thought that I'd rather not, um, keep this website running there if, you know, instead of just putting bad quality and whatever, just let it be there. Right. So, yeah, quality matters a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. And Stephanie, uh, when was that moment when you have decided to um, to not work a nine to five and to actually work only for yourself, by yourself, uh, to become an entrepreneur? 
Yeah. So I had been, you know, again, I was working in the financial literacy space and, you know, I, I, on paper, I was working at my dream job and it was with a startup doing financial literacy online and designing some really cool programs, um, for, for students. Uh, but really what, what it came down to was one, I had developed a really unique skill set that I wanted to be known for. And I wanted to be kind of my own ambassador for this, this talent and skill that I had. And then the second was just, it really drained my health. And I just, I've realized now that I've worked for myself for two years, um, that I'm just not made for a nine to five schedule. And there was just a lot, and I'm not especially made for a, you know, eight to six thirty schedule, which was like, which was most of my days. And it really was taking a toll on my health physically. Um, and I don't know if there's a lot of people that talk about that openly when they're at a job and they're, and they're really struggling and suffering. But I realized that like I had a, I had a drastic choice to make. I either continue down this path, um, and, and find a way to stay healthy while working these hard schedules, or I find a more creative way to work in the world and earn money. Um, and so those two forces together of wanting to be my own thought leader in the world and really recognizing that I had to do something different with my health and how I was feeling, um, that pushed me over the edge to, to, uh, to quit my job. And it wasn't really on my radar. I wasn't planning on becoming an entrepreneur. I was still applying to jobs up until the last minute, but started asking around and realized that I could cobble together enough freelance writing and, um, do some independent consulting work for a lot of my old employers. Uh, and it would be enough to replace my income and, and work less hours, which was also fantastic. So that's kind of how I left that nine to five world, um, and ventured out on my own. And do you ever see yourself getting a job? If you need to? <laughs> uh, no, I don't at all. <laughs> and it's funny because it just, this wasn't on my career path. I just didn't ever think I would be my own businesswoman. And now that I'm here, um, the flexibility, the creativity, and, and honestly, the income potential and the earning potential I have, which is I literally can create money by doing that online with my business, by picking up new consulting work. And it gives me so much more freedom than I had ever with just a standard nine to five paycheck. So for the time being, it's, I, I can't imagine doing anything else. Yeah, I totally understand you. And it's really, really similar in my case, I guess, uh, you know, this, there've been ups and downs in, in my online marketing career for the past seven years. And especially the first few years when I was, it's not that I wasn't serious about it. It's just that I found my comfort zone really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I almost um, lost everything because of it. And there have been moments when I was like, you know, without much money <laughs> or without any money. And I was I was thinking, I was considering getting a job. Not considering, but I would, you know, it'd be that moment when you're like, well, if I want to keep eating, I'll have to get a job mm -hmm. because this is not working out for me anymore. And I always found a way, usually in some creative way, <laughs> to kind of get beyond that and keep on moving, you know, until eventually when I became a lot more serious and not serious, a lot more consistent. There you go. I think that's the proper word about the whole business. But, you know, I I didn't want to have another job so badly that I always found a way to get out of my um, problems. Mm -hmm. And well, this time it's totally different because it's getting a lot more um, serious and what I wanted to do. That's the consistency that's that's paying off. But yeah, same thing. I never see myself getting another job and I never see myself asking if I could take a day off or if I could leave earlier or later or, you know, because at this moment right now, my only thing that that I'm obliged to do something is on Mondays when I release a podcast episode. Right. Mm hmm. And I love doing that. I don't mind. And, you know, I could uh, schedule it if I really need to not be in front of the computer. I could schedule it so it goes out by itself, although I prefer to be in front of the computer when it happens. But, you know, I really love that, that I decide to go somewhere for a week or for three days or for five months and I could just leave and I don't have to worry about um, asking for the vacation and I don't have to worry about not having money for rent because well nobody's gonna pay you five months vacation it's yourself that does it so yeah it's totally different world and I 
don't see um, ever going back to like a nine to five. Yeah, and I'm so glad. Even if I do go back, I'm just I'm very happy that I decided to make the leap, uh, just so that I know that I I can do it. I can. It's always an option. Uh, I know how it feels. Um, so just just doing it one time, even in my life, no matter what happens in the future, feels really rewarding too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, Stephanie, what what is your your plan for keep on promoting? I guess art to self is because you said that you're growing it organically, mm-hmm. but you said that you, this is your main focus as well at the same time. Right, exactly. So you know, in terms of organically, I'm letting it grow um, in terms of how people are are paying and and donating for art to self, um, but I'm definitely out there marketing it because for every subscriber I get to art to self you know, that, that equals a certain dollar amount for me. Just, just as the list grows, my donations grow. Um, so I'm continuously, you know, like going on podcasts like this one to get kind of my story out there and to have people know me and and learn about what I'm doing. And then also guest posting. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, now that I have all these cartoons and I'm, I'm coming out with a book, uh, just a, a compilation of my best motivational cartoons, and that'll come out this year. Um, that will also be an amazing kind of marketing tool. I always think of having a book as one of the best business cards you can have. So once I have a published book, um, in my arsenal, I'm hoping to use that for public speaking, uh, to be booked on some, some other, you know, bigger media outlets, uh, and then to take the book and, and just really leverage that to get well known and, and continue to double down on what I know works, which is, interviews and high quality guest posts with um cartoons to go along with them mm-hmm. i'm totally getting that book once again oh awesome great <laughs> uh do you have like a, a date in mind around when it's going to be out you know it's this book has been such an interesting process um i am i want it to be out by uh by the christmas because i you know I, or for the holiday shopping season i guess this year mm-hmm. um for so many reasons um self publishing has been a really interesting journey i'm glad that i took it into my own hands but there's still i feel like every day is a new lesson and the thing i have to figure out before <laughs> before i hit the publish button so my yeah. goal is to have it out for the holidays. I know people are waiting to buy the book for themselves, to buy their the book for their you know family members too, and and then it's also around for the New Year. So if you need some motivation for whatever New Year's res- resolution you have, you've got art to self the book. Uh, that's awesome. So extra paycheck podcast listeners, go to art to self dot com, sign up to that email list to get daily motivation. And at the same time, I'm sure Stephanie will notify her list whenever the book comes out. And I think it will be not only a great book for uh, many of us entrepreneurs who always seek motivation and that would be something too cool to have at home and to look through from time to time, right? I think it would also, as you just mentioned, would make a great gift for um, for friends, for family, and for other entrepreneurs as well. So I hope uh, people jump jump on it once it comes out. Oh, thank you for saying that. Uh, Stephanie, quick question like that about uh, self-publishing. Are you doing it through Amazon? I am. I mean, just when I sat down and researched the process, it, it was so unbelievably easy. I, I almost couldn't believe it. Um, there are some, you know, formatting things that I have to keep in mind, but, um, I'm using create space and it's, it, it's, uh, it's amazing how easy it's going to be to just press literally a giant button and have the book delivered to my doorstep to see it in physical form. Oh, that's really awesome. And I've mentioned it on, on some other episodes that I thought of publishing a book at some point and I don't know what, but it's, you know, it's one of those like childhood dreams. Mm-hmm. Like I exactly. want to publish a book at some point and <laughs> I'll make it happen. I, I'm sure I'll make it happen at some point. And this is why I ask you because I'm, I'm starting to kind of gather information about those things and I've heard of Amazon publishing, but I've heard that it's really complicated to go through them. So like you're telling me the complete opposite from what I've heard. You know, it's overwhelming when you open up the page and you look at all the steps. But when you actually sit down and say, okay, what does this mean on my end? Um, It's not that hard. And I'm also, I'm paying somebody to do the formatting for me because I'm not, I I wouldn't trust myself to format my book properly. And it would be such a hassle that it's worth, you know, it's only an extra couple hundred dollars for someone to, 
you know, cross all the T's, dot all the I's, get it up there for me. So that part, you know, I'm a big fan of outsourcing things that just are a pain in the butt for you and you really can't, you know, figure out on your own. If And, and that piece is definitely worth it for me. And that's the way to go. Thank God for outsourcing. Right. <laughs> And you know Amazon. I I'm actually a seller on Amazon. I sell my my own product, a physical product, and wow, that the seller uh, they call it the seller central mm-hmm. panel. This is the the worst thing I've ever. Oh, used. is it the <laughs> least user friendly interface I've ever seen in my life? Seriously, that is so funny. So I think maybe yeah, maybe that's why whoever told me that it was really complicated. Maybe that's what they meant. Maybe it's just like the. Not the process of publishing, but the actual getting around the publishing page maybe seems a bit confusing and complicated. Yeah. And, and you know, um, the other thing, too, is I also this has been a childhood dream to write a book. Um, I just never knew what the book was until one day I looked back and I was like, oh, I've got 200 cartoons here. Oh, that makes a book almost. So. Um, it, it just, the book came really naturally to me. And, and I realized that even when I had all the content for the book, I was still procrastinating it because it seemed so challenging and daunting. And I was like, oh, but that looks complicated. And I'd open up Amazon. And I'm like, oh, that piece looks really complicated. <laughs> um, and it wasn't until I actually worked with my coach and she was like, you have to sit down and map out the process. And then you have to come back and tell me what part's complicated. And we'll pick it, out the pieces and figure out where you need help, who you need to talk to. And so it was, I think it was about taking things out piece by piece and being like, all right, really, what are the elements that I can handle? What can't I, what do I need help with? Uh, And then it it really felt a lot less overwhelming. Yeah, this is really great advice. And I think that's, uh, you know, a lot of us don't do things that we want to do because of that. Mm -hmm. Exactly that, because we don't know where to begin or where to go with it. And, you know, if we just sit down and spend some time taking it apart, it'll be a lot easier than it seems. Right, exactly. In my case, it was with uh, with this very podcast, actually. I think I spent um, a few months, three, four months probably <laughs> starting it. And not starting it, but researching how to start it. And as you can imagine, half of it was procrastination mm-hmm. out of fear. Because I would run across like different kinds of bits and pieces of information about it. And some people told me about this kind of hosting or this kind of microphone or um, some technical terms that I have never heard of in my life. And that scares you away. Mm-hmm. You're like, I don't, I, no, I, nope, <laughs> I'm not doing that. It's way too complicated. And at some point, it was actually after the New Year's because I, re- I did like a big redesign for my blog and there was like a big project. And I told myself, okay, that's done. That's out of the way. Time to concentrate on the podcast. So I just sat down and I started like literally writing down on a piece of paper with a pen, like a process, step by step, how how does a um, someone's voice ends up on iTunes, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, after that, after like a few days, it took me a few days to finally to record my first episode and launch it and do everything. And eventually what I ended up doing, I wrote a blog post um, of about 7,000 words. A lot of people called it a mini novel, and that blog post is basically a step-by-step instruction on how to start a podcast um, today. You know, so I think it's been one of my most um, popular blog posts on my blog because it's in such a great detail. And I did it mostly because I could not find um, like an actual step-by-step process with all the details, right? So when I've gone through it myself, well, I came out with exactly that, what I was looking for, the resource that I tried to find and I couldn't. So it's like, well, I'll, I'll come out with that resource and share it with people. There you go. Enjoy. Yeah. And it, and that's exactly, you know, it goes back to what we were saying earlier, which is creating the thing that you need the most. Um, and, and I'm a big fan of doing that. And that's exactly what art to self is, which is if I need it, I think other people need it too. Um, so it's a great, it was a great idea for you to document all of that because that means I'm sure there's so many other people out there that have the same questions you had. So when are you releasing the course on how to self-publish through Amazon? That's right. No, uh, gosh, I'm going to leave that to somebody else. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I realized too, you know, there's, there's been projects I've worked on and, and other sites that um, there was a time when I thought that I was going to make all my money off of e-courses because I, I had this knowledge about 
um, personal finance and things like that. But in the end, I, I realized that I don't do e-courses and I'm not good at them. And even though I thought it was the path I had to follow, um, I launched a course and it, it just didn't, it just didn't go where I wanted it to go because it just wasn't me and it wasn't what I was good at. So that's the other piece of the online entrepreneur game. There's so many formulas out there. Um, and it's really following what works for you and what feels good for you and what you're naturally talented at and not subscribing to, um, to what you think you should do like an e-course. So that's a long way to say that I'm not going to be doing a, a course anytime soon, but I'm going to just stick to, to what I'm good at, which is <laughs> cartoons and asking people to support me along the way. Awesome. And one of the last questions about your business, I guess, is the importance of email marketing, the importance of building a list for your own website. Tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, so my list is where my business lives. And I'm really grateful that I um, I, I started a a business that's based around my list because it forced me to concentrate on that one single metric. I have no other more important metrics in on art to self than building that email list. And I get pretty, you know, relatively low traffic. Um, and my goal isn't to increase traffic to a ridiculous amount. It's to convert people to my website. So I have a very high conversion rate. And so it's, it's really focusing on what matters. And for me, uh, I'm going to have those email addresses forever. It doesn't matter what, what Facebook does with their algorithm. It doesn't matter you know, what I'm throwing out into the social media universe. The people who follow me, they're getting this delivered to their inboxes, and I can tap into them at any time. Like a couple weeks ago, I sent an email out to my whole list and said, you know, what do you want from Art to Self next? You know, I'm, I'm doing this book, but you know, do you want mugs and t-shirts? And, and I just asked to figure out who they were and what they wanted. And I, the response I got, the open rate, the response rate was so incredible because they're used to responding to me and seeing my emails. And, um, it really creates a more intimate relationship and it, it's just so invaluable. So really focusing on that. And, and you'll see if you go to art self.com, my, homepage is entirely just a giant email collection box and you can get around it and see the the cartoons but um it's it was just it's so important because my entire business lives there and that won't change no matter what happens with you know everything else in the world is like people have email addresses and they usually don't change those either so it's been I'm really happy that I decided to build my business around focusing on that one single important metric Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't totally agree with you about your website, the way you just called it. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because um, I think your website is really not that. What you did really well, um, well, I think that you've, like, you've done a perfect job doing that, is that um, what we call above the fold is your email subscription. Right. Right. You have a lot more to your website that, you know, we could get by scrolling down, which is not, you know, that email, like you said, email collection box. It's just great content. But when we come to your website, the very first thing you see is that uh, email opt-in box, which is, well, the whole point of your of your business and your website. Right, exactly. So, and I, and I so, want people to see that first before anything. So yeah, you are right. They can get into the art by scrolling down. Um, but it's just, I think, driving home that point, which is if you really want to participate in art to self, it, it has to be subscription. It's subscribe, subscribe, mm -hmm. subscribe. Yeah, and I what I said that you've done a great job by putting your main call to action, like making it obvious, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a lot of people, they're really shy to yeah. ask for the sale or ask for the email address. And they just make a, a little box somewhere on the side asking people to subscribe. But no, if you want people to subscribe to your uh, website or to your email list, you have to make it obvious. Because it's not that people don't want to subscribe. They just don't know what you want from them. So they come to your website. They look at your content. They love it. And they just leave. Yeah. But uh, that's simply because they don't know what else you want them to do. Like, look, I've read your content. It's great. Well, thanks for putting it out. And they don't know that you want them to subscribe, right? So when you make it obvious like this, like the way you did it, when you put it above the fold, explaining what it is and making like, well, it's it's right here. You mm -hmm, can't miss it. Mm -hmm. No, it's kind of helping actually people 
do what what they came for. There you go. Yeah, that's a great point. It really is helpful. It's if they're here and they want to be motivated and they like cartoons, I need to help them out to subscribe. Like it should be so obvious where they can get more of that. And I think that's where the difference between, you know, feeling kind of scummy about your marketing and really using marketing as the, the you're you're helping the people who already want your stuff and if they don't, they can leave, but you want it to be obvious. Um, about where they can get more and what they're getting if they decide to get more. Yeah, totally. And see, this is like what I did on my on my blog as well. If you go to the homepage of my blog, it's the first thing you see above the fold as well. It's not like yours. I don't have the um, actual op, like uh, email um, field, mm-hmm. but I have a big green button that says, uh, start here or get started, something like that, right? So when people come to my blog and they're not sure where to click, where to read, where to go, they have this big freaking thing in the <laughs> face that says click here, get started here. And, you know, when, once they click, they're taken to another page, which is the opt-in page for my email. Once again, just like yours. But, I mean, it, I added an ex- extra step to it, uh, which, you know, um, it's debatable if it's good or bad because extra step is usually bad, but you know it's something to test in every niche and every website. But yeah, the same. I did the same thing. It's kind of like in your face. Here's where I want you to click. Don't leave the site because you're confused about it. Right. Click here, and yeah. that that would answer your question. Because people who are not interested in what you have or your content, they will not subscribe. It's, it's not just that they wouldn't even like stay on your website no matter what. They would leave. Right. And you don't want those people anyway. Right. They're not your your targeted audience. Yes, exactly. So. So, yeah, there you go. Um, well, that that was a lot of rant. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm also very passionate about the opt-in box, so I think it's worth talking about. Yeah, and, you know, a few years ago, in, like, 2008, I think, the main uh, catchphrase in the whole, like, world of online marketing and online business was the money is in the list. Mm-hmm. And I think it still stays true today because if you are doing your um, email marketing properly and if you're building a proper list with a good audience, it is, I think, one of the most profitable venues and one of the best ways to reach your audience time and time again. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, for <laughs> speaking from personal experience, I've moved places, you know, six times in the last six years. My email address has never changed. And there are lists that I've been on, you know, for years and years and years because I, I love them and they're valuable. But it's it's the one thing, um, you know, you can send an email, it lands in someone's inbox and there's no variable or whether Google picks it up or, you know, Facebook is changing what they do. And um, it's it's absolutely the best way to go, in my opinion. Exactly. There you go. And another thing you mentioned that you're you would rather work on your conversion rate rather than traffic. I totally agree with you 100 percent because I would rather get 50 people to my website converting at 50 percent than thousand people converting at one percent. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, you get 20 times less people, but you still get more subscribers in the end. So that's. <laughs> the conversion rate is super important. And I think, as you said, I think it's more important than traffic in itself. Right. Because you could be getting tons of traffic, but low quality leads. And again, it depends on your niche, though. If you're getting, uh, you know, if you're trying to sell sponsorships, you want to boost your traffic numbers because you want to do that. Um, that, you know, there's a different incentive there. But for me, I'm like, I, I want a high quality subscriber who wants what I have, who's going to have a long term relationship with me. So I'm mm-hmm. all yep, I'm all about that conversion rate, too. That makes a lot of sense. All right, Stephanie, one last question for you. And that's a good one. What would be your most important suggestion to beginner entrepreneurs? Oh, so <laughs> beginner entrepreneurs, I just just start something, just try something. Um, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there. You know, I, it took me a long time to be comfortable putting my art online because it was something I really cared about and was really passionate about. Um, but once I did the, the feedback was so incredible. So putting your most vulnerable stuff out there is really valuable. And then the other piece of advice is, build in consistency. So find a structure or a way to keep, to force yourself to be consistent in sharing. Um, because naturally that'll help you grow. If you find a mechanism where you're sharing and growing somehow every day with the people that you want to reach. 
Thank you, Stephanie. Amazing advice. And for the past half a year or so, that's been my most important advice as well, the consistency. Mm -hmm. I think there's nothing more important than staying consistent. And I say that because when once I became really consistent, I saw the real changes and real um, growth in the business. So, yeah, to me, that's <laughs> that's super important. Stay consistent and just keep at it. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Stephanie. So besides going to art2self.com, is there another way for people to get in touch with you or to learn more about you or uh, your business? Yeah. So again, art2self.com is where my newsletter lives. You can get your daily inspirational cartoon. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter at Steph Halligan, S-T-E-P-H. Um, and, you know, talk to me there. Let me know how you, you, you know, like this podcast. Um, and then you can also follow uh, me on Facebook at facebook.com slash art to self. All right. Thank you for sharing that. And thank you so much for coming on to the podcast today. I had a blast talking to you. Yeah, likewise. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Extra Paycheck Podcast. As usual, I will be putting up a show notes page at extrapodcast.com forward slash 29. This is where I'll be sharing all the links and resources that we talked about in today's episode, as well as some more information on today's guest, Stephanie Halligan. If you haven't already, you could subscribe to Extra Paycheck uh, Show on iTunes. So simply go to iTunes Store and search for Extra Paycheck Podcast or go to extrapodcast.com forward slash iTunes. This is where you will also be able to leave a rating and a review, which will help me tremendously. So once again, thank you for listening and I'll talk to you next Monday.